Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ushanka Show. My name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. Today we're going to talk about top 10 Soviet holidays, the most popular holidays in the Soviet Union. Initially, I thought I can make this video pretty short, but my golly, it's not going to happen. So please be ready for another long and boring video from the Ushanka Show. So here we go, top 10 Soviet holidays. Number one. Номер один. New Year celebration. Празднование нового года. I doubt that anyone would challenge me if I say that New Year celebration on December 31st to January 1st was the biggest, the most popular holiday in Soviet Union. And actually, it was official day off since December 23rd of 1947. In Soviet Union, we didn't celebrate at all Christmas, which is happens in America and Western Europe on December 25th. We called it Catholic Christmas and it was just nothing going on at all. And maybe because of that we had uh, totally different terms, like we never called our Christmas trees as Christmas trees. We didn't call it Rождественская елка. We call it Novogodnya елка. So it's a new year and it's not tree. It's not a detail. Yolka means fir tree. F-I-R, fir tree. Hope I say correctly. So you buy New Year fir for your celebration. You don't buy Christmas tree. So Soviet people purchased fir tree or mostly a lot of people prefer pine tree because pine could stay without dropping its needles way longer than fir tree. We didn't have systems of keeping water like those buckets. Usually just have a special stand, so a tree slowly dying, and, and apparently pine tree holds its uh, needles way longer than fir. So if you live in a city, you have to purchase one. People, of course, in the countryside, they probably just usually go in the woods and cut one down, because like northern Ukraine is mostly pine trees, so that's what people would do. And we will purchase uh, those trees somewhere right at the end of uh, December, so... If you start shopping around 28th, 29th of December, it's when people purchase their Christmas trees, New Year furs. And then, like a lot of uh, Russians here in America, what they do, they just wait till Americans started throwing away their Christmas trees. And they just uh, go on the street, pick up a Christmas tree, and now they call it New Year tree, and place it in their house. And that way they save a lot of money. Another difference is that we didn't have Santa Claus. We had so-called... Grandpa Frost and Snigurechka. I even don't know how to translate Snigurechka, but the word Snigurechka based from Sneg, snow. So this pretty young lady, so this old Grandpa Frost and his uh, granddaughter Snigurechka, that's the characters usually that uh, associated with the New Year celebration. Kindergarten celebrated New Year Eve big time. So they will invite, or probably they paid money for uh, Dead Morozy Snigurechka to show up. And then we'll have presentation, we'll have dances, uh, our parents will make our special costumes. And, you know, there'll be a different theme every year. One year was a bear, my mom made that uh, costume. Another year we just wear silly hats. Of course, we have a big New Year fir tree, decorations, stuff like that. And then we got presents. It's kind of interesting. When I'm talking presents, we have so-called подарочный набор present set. So that was the like a box with decorations, New Year decorations. Inside will be a bunch of different candies. So there'll be just a mix of all these popular Soviet candies, and that's what you get as a present. Some families practiced also their own presents under the tree. My family never done it, so I grew up. I never had a single present for the New Year. Never. Not a single time. But of course, the main celebration would be at home. And usually you invite your friends or you invite your uh, family members. So hardly ever there'll be just one family. There'll be a lot of people gathering together. And of course, you have a, a lot of foods on the table. And some like uh, herring and shuba was one of the classical uh, salads. And of course, if you celebrate, you have to have alcohol. 
And if for the New Year celebration, you had to have Sovietska Champanska, Soviet Champagne, because that's what you pop the cork when the Kurante, when the main Kremlin watch hits 12 o'clock, you pop the cork, you make the loud explosion sound, and then you pour champagne to celebrate brand new year. And while you're hanging out with your friends and family, you watch TV, so they'll be translating some entertainment uh, New Year programs. One was called Galuboya Ganyok, Blue Flames. So I guess it's like you watch the fire in the fireplace has blue flames. I guess that's the reason why the name was used. So there'll be performers, famous singers and groups performing, and they just kind of entertain you while you're waiting for the midnight. And usually five minutes before midnight, there'll be our Soviet leader. So for many years, there was Leonid Brezhnev, then later Gorbachev. Now it's Putin, of course. So they will uh, greet Soviet people, Russian people, wish them all the best, uh, tell them how great was the previous year, then the next year will be even better. And then there'll be Kurante, and then we open champagne and start celebrating. And of course, prior to the holidays, you'll start mailing out a lot of greeting uh, postcards, which we call New Year postcards. And a lot of them uh, were showing old men, so that's the old year that's going away, and the New Year's like a young kid. So they transfer, you know, from one to each other, like, Really, like, okay, this year is over, New Year starts. Early in 50s, 60s, we had uh, quite a few greeting cards that uh, showed achievements of the Soviet Union, like our space achievements. During the Khrushchev era, when there was a major construction of new apartment buildings, so-called Khrushchevkas, we even had a postcards dedicated to uh, housing. And, of course, during the World War II, as we call Great Patriotic War, from 1941 till 1945, there are many military-themed New Year greeting cards, and pretty much we just wish Happy New Year, but we just say Snovem Godom with New Year, I guess you can translate it. And a lot of this irony, like you have a Soviet sniper greeting Germans with bullets, uh, wishing them Happy New Year. So those are quite interesting new year greetings postcards and later on like my years we're talking 70s and early 80s we had a lot of very cute animal themed uh, new year greeting cards and i love those a lot so they'll show cute bears cute other animals as well as chiburashka that uh, character of the soviet cartoon okay so this is the most popular holiday number one in Soviet Union New Year celebration. Number two. Number two. May 9, the Victory Day. So the victory in the Great Patriotic War. So we're not talking about victory in the World War II because after Germany capitulated in May of 1945, we still had war with Japan. This holiday, I find it very interesting that as more and more the events of World War II are fading away in the past, as bigger and bigger the holiday uh, becomes. It actually started under Leonid Brezhnev, and it was just getting bigger and bigger, and now in modern Russia it became huge. So Comrade Stalin created that holiday, so he signed the law in 1945 and created that May 9 is the official victory day. And that was a day off, uh, holiday was day off from 1945 to 1947. Then it's interesting, in 1947, they had a new law and they swapped days off. So New Year became a day off and May 9 was just a regular day. You still celebrate Victory Day, but you don't have, uh, people didn't have a day off. Only in 1965, so that was the 20th anniversary of the victory in World War II, or Great Patriotic War, I'm sorry, and Brezhnev signed the law to make it a day off again. And then they started having military parades. Prior to that, till 1965, we had no parades whatsoever. Then eventually May 9 became as a showing off of the Soviet military might. We had a huge parade in Moscow. And later, same day, but at the night, we'll have a huge fireworks. So this was the second biggest holiday in Soviet Union, May 9, Victory Day. Number three. Number three. May 1st. 
A Day of International Solidarity of Workers. Международный день солидарности трудящихся. This is the oldest Soviet holiday. It was a day off since 1918, a year after October Revolution. And originally was called the International Day. So International, the Organization of International Communists. And then in 1972, it was renamed to Day of International Solidarity of Workers. And now I think they have a different name again. It's the Holiday of Spring and Labor. So as I mentioned, it was a day off, but we actually had to show up uh, for the parade. So usually all the main uh, towns will have a pretty big parade. The ma most famous parade in Kiev happened on May 1st, 1986 just several days after explosion of Chernobyl power plant and one of the worst days uh, for the radioactive contamination of the Kiev, but we still had that parade. So usually you have a day off, but uh, every factory had to send uh, so many people to participate in this parade and the rest usually would go out in the countryside and plant potatoes. And also in kindergartens, we'll have a small celebration. We'll get these little flags. As you see in this picture, there's me uh, with the flags. And flags will say, Mir Trud Mai. So be peace, labor, may, or uh, Miru Mir, uh, world deserve peace. Um, so that was also like small celebrations in the, I can't say a daycare, in the kindergarten. And usually... We call them May holidays, Maiskie Prazniki. So May 1st through May 9 was like a Maiskie Prazniki, May holidays. And people quite often, depending how it falls in the week, they'll take a couple of days off from work. So they use that time to go out in the country and help their parents or grandparents to plant potatoes. So that was a big deal uh, to have your fields ready to go and plant them while you have this window of days off on May holidays. Number four. Number four. Russian Orthodox Christmas and Russian Old New Year. So before the great October Socialist Revolution 1917, Russia had its calendar off for about two weeks. So that's the Gregorian calendar. I didn't bother to uh, search on this topic, but you guys are welcome to post the comments. Uh, so we had a couple of holidays, which sound strange, like Old New Year, which is January 14. And also Russian Orthodox Christmas, which is January 7. So that's what the Soviet people will celebrate. And that was unofficial holiday, like government didn't uh, provide days off or nothing. It was just old tradition that people kept, uh, regardless the attempts of Soviet government to fight any religious holidays. So our Christmas, I can't say it's Soviet Christmas, but we just call it Nasha Rajistvo, Soviet Christmas or Russian Orthodox Church Christmas, was January 7, and it was strictly religious holiday. So people who celebrate that, they will go to church uh, for all night, and they will sing uh, psalms and walk around the church and do all that the magic uh, celebrating the birth of Christ. Then a week later on January 14, some people would celebrate Old New Year. So it wasn't as big as the main New Year celebration. It was more like keeping with old tradition. So some people will have some meals, some drinks, uh, and will celebrate Old New Year. So you have to keep your New Year tree, New Year fir, Novogodnya Yolka from end of December till middle of January. This is when we kept our trees. And this was the time when we performed our carols, Kalyatki, and I participate in that. So kids will gather together and they'll walk around the apartment buildings, ring the doorbells, and they sing some Christmas songs or Kalyatki songs, and they would uh, toss some seeds uh, like usually we use rice and then uh, based on our performance people will give us candy and sometimes will give us money and that's like old tradition going way back when people in the villages will be celebrating like for real and then they'll go and uh, visit other people and perform songs and wish uh, the best uh, for the new year 
So this was number four holiday in the Soviet Union. As, as I said, it was kind of like unofficial. As a Russian Orthodox Christmas and Old New Year. Sounds silly, but I know. Starry Novy God. Number five. Number five. November 7th. The anniversary of the Great October Revolution of 1917. It's another important Soviet holiday. It was celebrated beginning from 1927, and the last year we celebrated was 1990, so a year before the end of the Soviet Union. In 1991, was not a celebrated anymore. Fun fact: in 2017, some people celebrated 100 years since the Great October Revolution, but fortunately or unfortunately. The Soviet Union, the product of that revolution, didn't make it for the 100th anniversary. So this was mostly government holiday. We had a day off. Some people will mail uh, postcards with the greetings, with anniversary of Great October Revolution. But the main thing about this holiday that a lot of factory openings and other big events in the Soviet economy was they tried to make them happen by the November 7th. So that was like a dedication to this biggest holiday, the Great October Revolution anniversary. For example, in August of 1977, the nuclear Soviet icebreaker Arctica was the very first surface ship that reached the Northern Pole. And that was dedicated to the 60th anniversary of Great October Revolution. Another instant milestone that Chernobyl nuclear power plant was initially put in service in 1977. And I recall reading somewhere that they skipped a lot of testing because Communist Party leaders in Moscow were pushing to put the power plant in service before the end of 1977 so they can dedicate the start of the power plant to the 60th anniversary of Great October Revolution. That's one of the small dominoes that later fell and created the problem, that huge strategy of 1986, because they didn't make the proper testing done back in 1977. So it was a holiday number five, November 7, the anniversary of Great October Revolution. Number six. Number six. Восьмое марта. Международный женский день. March 8, International Women's Day. So March 8 was kind of like a combination of Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. We didn't have actually Valentine's Day. February 14, we didn't celebrate at all. And it's kind of sad because the girl I had a horrible crush on the 8th grade. She actually had a birthday on the February 14. But, I mean, that's an awesome reason to bring her flowers. Uh, just because it's such a nice combination a day of people who fall in love and her birthday, but nope, we didn't celebrate Valentine's Day. So March 8th was combination, as I said, Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. March 8th was another Soviet holiday and pretty old one. It was celebrated in Soviet Union since 1921 and it was a day off. And kind of similar to Mother's Day, you bring uh, ladies your wife or girlfriend or wife and girlfriend flowers and flowers we're talking mostly would be tulips or landishi forgot to check the translation that's those first flowers coming up in the spring uh, maybe roses and of course then you have greeting cards and candy sometimes at places of work co-workers will have a little celebration so they will maybe sneak in alcohol so to bring a cake tort some candies and flowers for the female co-workers and have a small celebration and also we celebrated in school and that was kind of silly because you didn't have a choice what which girl you're gonna give flowers or present like in my case a teacher will pick or you randomly pick uh, so every boy had a girl assigned so not the girl you like it the girl you got assigned so you come up with some presents for her and then uh, later, for another holiday we're going to talk next, a girl will give you a present. So it was nothing about the girl you like. It was just the girl you got assigned by your school teacher. So that was holiday number six. 
March 8, International Women's Day or the celebration of spring. Moving along, number 7. Number 7. Soviet Army and Soviet Navy Day. Dien Krasnoye Army i Vayenna Marskova Flota. So February 23rd was kind of a combination of Father's Day and maybe somewhat Valentine's Day. So you can give a present to a boy you like, but also you give a present to your father and you congratulate any man and especially guys that served in the military. So a lot of holidays combined in February 23rd. And it's also pretty, pretty old Soviet holiday. It started in 1922. So originally it was called Red Army Day in 1922 till 1946. Then they changed name to the Soviet Army Day. So Red Army Day, then Soviet Army Day. And in 1949, the new official name was Day of Soviet Army and Navy. VMF, Vayanna Marskoy Flot, or if they call it uh, Navy in English. Similar thing as the March 8, but this time there'll be guys uh, getting congratulated, getting a postcard. Like I remember mailing a postcard to my own father to g congratulate him with this day. And then in school and at places of work, usually ladies don't bring you flowers. They'll bring some kind of uh, food, snacks, and they will celebrate February 23rd, Red Army Day. Number eight. Number eight. Easter, or as we say it, Pascha. So this religious holiday is another example of fruitless attempts of the Soviet government uh, to uh, make people quit celebrating anything, any religious holidays, and Easter survived through all those years, despite all many efforts of the Soviet government. Now, this holiday was always a mystery for me as a kid because it happened all over the place. What I mean, like, it could happen in March, it can happen in April, it could happen in May, and I honestly had no clue how it's all related so i had to uh, research a little bit and my goodness now with google it's so easy so apparently uh, we celebrate easter on their sunday first sunday after the spring full moon so as i said it can happen from march all the way till may and apparently this year it's going to happen on april 19. and interestingly usually there's be different easter which we call jewish easter Yevreskaya Pascha, it will happen like two weeks prior, our Pascha, our Easter, but sometimes it will happen on the same day. So anyways, that was a quite celebrated, but I said it was not government holiday and people were kind of celebrating more like hush hush. So of course, religious people will spend a lot of time on this day and night in the church celebrating Easter. I believe you go there night prior and you stay up all night singing and doing all other cool stuff that I never did. Uh, my parents didn't do it. So for me, uh, Easter was always about delicious food. So my mom always will bake Paschi Easter breads, that sweet bread with raisins. And also she will color eggs. And back then in good old days, we didn't use any artificial coloring whatsoever. The most popular way to color the eggs was to boil them in the uh, onion skin so those big large like vandali onions you peel that brown uh, dry skin and then you boil it eggs and the skin and it makes the eggs looks that nice kind of brownish color or you can uh, squeeze uh, sugar beets and then you dip eggs and that let it sit in that pink dark color and it turns eggs uh, beautiful purple color and another fun thing to do on Easter for us kids was to have egg battles. And I was surprised that here in America no one knew about it. Like my kids actually got very excited when I showed them. So you color your eggs and then you take some eggs with you and you meet other uh, kids and then you hit each other egg. And if you cracked your opponent's eggs, you, you take his egg. And of course, back in the old days when people were don't have a shortage of food, you can actually, if you have a good egg, hard uh, shell egg, you can bring quite a few eggs home. And as a trick, the egg that has the best, the hardest shell, usually it colors the worst. So if you boil eggs with the onion skins, you pick the ones that look the worst, like they uh, 
have spots all over so they kind of spotchy look that the egg has the thickest the hardest shell and that's the one you need to use to battle other kids with their eggs okay so that was the holiday number eight russian orthodox easter pascha are you with me comrades number nine Номер девять. День рождения Владимира Ильича Ленина. The birthday of Vladimir Lenin. On April 22nd, 1870, Vladimir Ulyanov, and later he changed his name to Lenin, was born, and we celebrated his birthday every year on April 22nd. So that was strictly a government holiday. We didn't have a day off, but of course it was celebrated on tv on radio and in newspapers we maybe have some flags and banners but people really didn't celebrate it but it was all over tv of course and lenin's birthday was another anniversary or another date that they maybe tried to open new factory or dedicate some kind of labor achievements because of the lenin's birthday so that was number nine april 22nd the birthday of Comrade Lenin. We are almost there. Number 10. Number 10. День космонавтики. The day of space exploration. So now April 12th of 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space. Allegedly. I neither can confirm nor deny those achievements because there's quite a few questions about that flight but anyways so that was a big celebration of achievements of the soviet space technology and space exploration so i would say the april 12th jane cosmonautiki was like a soviet pride day because this pretty much was the biggest achievement of the soviet union is to beat america and have a the very first uh, person in space to be a Soviet citizen, so that was a big deal. So not like actually even a Soviet satellite Sputnik off, but actually the person, the Soviet person was first in space, so that was a big deal. That's why April 12th was a celebration of the Soviet Union. Okay, so here we are, 10 top Soviet holidays. I think it was my longest video yet. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, a cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet 